Okay, so now we need to cover the second part of MLA. MLA is a two-part system. You have to have in-text citations inside your paper, and then you have to have a works cited page at the end. If you're missing either one part or the other, you have actually plagiarized. So, both parts, in-text citation, works cited page. All right, if you've worked with MLA at all before, then you were probably told, well, you need to summarize or paraphrase or directly quote from your source, and then you need to put a citation after it. So, let me make up a quote real quick. We're going to talk about fans. By which I mean fans of a movie, fans of a television series, whatever. All right, so we'll pretend someone is talking here, a scholar. The reaction of fans is of primary importance in this case. And they were told, you were told as students, probably. All right, so I'm going to try quote in this particular case, although, like I said, even if you summarize, or even if you paraphrase, you still need an in-text citation afterwards. It's not just for direct quotes. So, the person's surname, in this case is going to be Hills, and then the page number where this quote, or the summary, or the paraphrase, whatever page that came from, goes afterwards. So we'll pretend like this was page 79 of a book. So, in-text citation, in parentheses, author's last name, surname, page number where the quote or summary or paraphrase came from. All right, please note a few things about this. First of all, I want you to notice that there is no comma between Hills and 79. There's no punctuation here. The next thing I want you to notice is that likewise, I did not say P, PG, or whatever for page number. No, 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 no. This is MLA style. You don't need that here. It's just the author's surname and then the page number. All right. Notice that the period goes on the outside of the parenthetical citation. That's what this is called, parenthetical citation, because it's made with parentheses. All right. So this is very basic, and it's not that it's wrong. But you are college students now, and you are writing scholarly papers. This is actually not your best option. All right, so let's talk about how to make the very best citation you can. First of all, we don't know who Hills is. So why do we care what Hills has to say about anything? That's nice. Hills is currently some random person off the street. Maybe Hill's opinion doesn't matter. Why should we think that it does? You didn't tell us anything about this person. You're writing a scholarly paper at this point, and you are now part of scholarly discourse. You are part of the scholarly world, or the academic world. So you need to address your readers in such a way that they understand why this person's opinion should matter, or potentially should matter. So let's get more specific. This is a scholarly monograph. Monograph is what you call a scholarly book. Written by someone named Matt Hills. It is named Fan Cultures. He has studied fandom. The back of the book will explain who he is. Matt Hills is a lecturer in media and cultural cities at Cardiff University. He is co-editor of Intensities, the journal of cult media. Now we know the credentials of Matt Hills. All right, now we can make him matter to the audience. So if you don't have a physical book that you've checked out from your library, and you probably don't, how do you find out this information? Google. Put the person's name into Google, and it, in almost all cases, will bring you this person because, you know, they'll, they probably publish multiple things at this point. You will find them, quite possibly, on their university's page, and their faculty directory, and you will find out who they are. 
Now in this particular case, they did not tell me whether or not Matt Hills has a PhD, so I don't know if I can say Dr. Matt Hills or not. Like if I googled him right this second, maybe I would find out. Probably so. But I do know that he is attached to a specific university, or he was at the time this book went to press. He was with this university. All right? So, in the text of your paper, you want to introduce your quote. So you need to say, I'm going to have to keep this in hand and make sure I get this university name correct. According to... Now you need to put in his name, Matt Hills. comma, because you're interrupting your sentence in order to give your readers his credentials, um, lecturer of, or lecturer in, I guess I should say, media, I'm not going to spell it and, cultural studies, at Cardiff University, Now you can start your quote. So keep track of your punctuation. You interrupted yourself. You were saying, according to Matt Hills, blah, 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 blah. So these commas are setting off this phrase in the middle of your sentence. So don't lose track of your grammar. So I'm going to pick a random page. All right. This seems, that's an S, to imply and I won't finish, I'm just gonna make a squiggle line. All right, this seems to imply that the best audio auto ethnographies should succeed in a type of self-deconstruction and self-destructiveness in which all possible grounds for legible cultural value are eroded, would be the entire quote if I had enough board space. It is from page 76 of his monograph, 76 in parentheses, period. All right, this is definitely the superior citation. You have the name of the person he was speaking, and you have the page number where this quote can be found, still in parentheses, still with the period on the outside here. Notice how you don't have to say Hill 76. You don't have to say Hill 76 because you put his name up here. You don't need to repeat yourself. All right? And you've got his credentials. Now we can think to ourselves as readers, you know, do I value the opinion of someone who is teaching media and cultural studies at this university? You know, will that make a difference to your reader? Well, it depends on many, many factors that you personally can't control. But it makes them aware of this person and why they would be talking about this and why anyone should care whether they have anything to say about it at all, right? This is the better way to go. All right. So, this is what I want you to keep in mind. Now, when it comes to using articles from databases, and probably many, many of you are using articles from databases, you need to go to the PDF file in and of itself. Let's pretend like someone made an ebook copy of Matt Hill's book, and for all I know, they did. The PDF copy will be an actual scan of these pages, which means the page numbers are in the scan at the bottom. So don't give us the, the page in the PDF. The PDF file itself will always start on page one. So it's not Matt Hill's page two of the scan. You know, it's Matt Hill's page 112 in this case. So go to the PDF and find the page numbers in the actual book or in the article that is inside of the scholarly journal and then cite from there. If you are on the internet, which I personally, as an instructor or professor rather, do not want you to be using the internet in my class. <laughs> but in other classes, if they're like, you can use the general internet for information, as of edition nine of MLA, you no longer have to put in paragraph numbers unless the website itself numbered the paragraphs for you. So they used to say, if you're on the internet, then, you know, if Matt Hills published an article on the internet, then it would be Hills, par for paragraph two. Well, unless the website literally gave you paragraph numbers, you don't have to do that as of edition nine. It did a weird fit. So, you just say hills. All right, as always, 
do keep checking back with either Purdue Owl or the actual MLA website itself, or you can buy an actual paper copy of the MLA handbook. Keep checking back for updates. They are actually updating all the time, and they're trying to keep pace with the internet and all the new technology we keep creating so that they can tell you how to cite new things. So do continually check. Don't consider this video your final choice um, because they might come out with edition 10 next month for all I know. So keep pace with them and as always, ask your professor or instructor if you have any questions. We're here to help.